Welcome to this video. I'm John Holly. I'm one of the registrars here at the Royal Derby Hospital. I'm just going to take you through a Beers Block procedure. The key thing here is to document when these are inserted and uh, staff here will generally do that for you. Don't put the sticker on on top, just those two little bits of tape because that's coming out once the sightiness is in. So we're using sightiness 1% and that needs to be made into a 0% solution by diluting it by half. So to do that we use 40 mils total, so two 20 mil syringes. Nice. Put a bit of air in, that gets it out, coming out nicely. Fill up to 10 mils. Do the same with your other side, and then you've got your normal saline. You dilute by half by filling up to 20 mils. And here we have our site nest ready to go in. The next stage is to put the cuff on. Now, if you come closer, we've got some soft band on the arm. This cuff is pneumatic. We've turned the gas on at the back. The blue goes at the top and everything writing wise stays the right way up. And the key thing here is to check that we've got skin that we can see above the cuff because when we put the side nest in the skin will change and we don't want to see that reciprocal change in the skin um, indicating that the side nest has leaked out. So what we're going to do is go to at least 250 but what we want to make sure is it's at least 100 above systolic. So we'll refer to the previous measurements that the nurses have done on blood pressure. So usually select 250 and then what we do is we elevate the arm. It usually takes a minute or so to exsanguinate the arm, just making room for all the volume of fluid that we're going to put in. So once that's done, I would inflate the cuff. I'll not do that now because Laura doesn't need it um, but you just do that by flicking that switch just check that that cuff is up and hard and document the time that the cuff goes up you literally just inject the entire 40 mils into the arm what you'll find is the skin will go blotchy the patient uh, needs to be warned about this because their hand ultimately ends up looking slightly corpse-like and if you tell them it turns the colour of corned beef that usually represents what happens quite well. And we have quite a lot of pressure in the venous system so we need to make sure that we press for quite a long time um, and generally I keep my finger on that well everything else is happening. So you can see that we're prepared with our lead because what we're going to do is manipulate, check with the fluoroscan which is behind us and then once we're happy the manipulation is good enough we're then going to plaster and three point pressure mould the cast so that it doesn't drift once it's been manipulated into a good position. So in order to get to that stage we need to rely on ligamentotaxis to get the distal radius in line. So Danielle's going to provide some counter traction. I'm going to grab the thumb here and 
probably these two fingers uh, is best and then we're just going to lean back and generally you want to have the pressure of holding on as tight as you can and leaning back so you feel like you're falling and if you let go you would fall over. So with the pressure on the thumb I'm still pulling with every manipulation we want to make it worse pull it and then make it better so what we're doing is putting our thumb down the distal radius till we feel a dip the thumb goes in the dip and that's where the fracture is then we make it worse and as we pull we push with our thumb you're pushing that fragment over into the position you want to hold it in now Charlie's book talks about pronation at this stage to hold the fracture and that's a good idea and what we'll do then is use the fluoroscan check it's in position you want to do you, you can let off the gas on the old ligamentous taxis we need to do an AP and a lateral and generally in the pronated position you can do it either way you want and that you need training on this before you can use it once that's done we'll get on with some plastering so what I find is useful is keeping that wrist flexed is enough to then let Anne do her business my leg up and then Chris is going to provide traction we don't want to have too much flexion at the wrist and once I'm happy I know that my distal radius is here so I'm going to put my thenar eminence over that fragment and then the rest of my hand is going to go up here my knee is in between and you then have to press quite hard in order to mold Okay, that's set enough. So as you can see there, what we want is that sort of nice bent plaster, straight bone. 